Hello and welcome back. Thank you so much for the news review, Baba K. And now it's over for our second interview. We have a very interesting guest, someone who is in tech, has a founder of ClickIt, but has decided to venture into tourism through a project called Kilometer 51. He's helping people explore Africa. His name is Gerald Kouwe. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank hello, you. Gerald. hello, Gerald. I say hello, Gerald. Because <laughs> <laughs> of the Gerald. Great Kouwe. to have you. Kouwe. Where is Kouwe from? Sorry is he Asaba? To... Yeah, Asaba. Ah, 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 really? How do you know that? I know there's a Kouwe Plaza in Asaba. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, is that Kouwe Plaza your Kouwe? Uh, well, yes. My dad's uncle, actually. Uh -huh, Aha, because oh, I, right. I know that area. I know that address. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you, yeah, and um, I'm, I'm glad that your name inspires questions with regards to how interesting it sounds. Because <laughs> what you hope to do is also something very interesting mm -hmm. that would um, that would satisfy the curiosity of many people who want to find out about different parts of the world and have been looking for ways to doing it. Mm -hmm. So tell us, you know, you are going to be going on a West African tour. Mm -hmm. Could you let us know about it a little bit more? Okay, so um, Kilometer Fifty One is a Pan African uh, road trip initiative that aims to other campaigns for a bodiless Africa. Um, but we thought that the best way to do something like that would be to execute it by way of road. So we want to explore the known and unknown parts of the continent and no other way to do it than by way of road. So instead of flying into the capital cities of these countries, we thought, let us drive and then have community engagement. We would um, um, talk about the topical issues that unites us as a continent. But then, because we are, the continent is already accustomed to too much talk, we thought to execute um, action events you know, that would express and exchange cultures and then we'll get to know each other better. So campaigning for a bodiless Africa with Kilometer 51 is more like a uh, campaign for building regional synergies. You know, let's see the opportunities that abound in, in a regional integration like the ECOWAS or the AU and stuff like that. Wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, from your profile, you started off as a tech person. Mm -hmm. You had found out of Clickit. Mm -hmm. How did you decide to veer from tech into tourism? Okay, um, so I actually do business development. Um, and then I play with a lot of ideas. So I'll, I'll, I'll just give you a, is it, is it a, a tree, what they call that thing? Is it family tree or what they call yeah, that? Yeah, that family. Well, no, not family tree anyway. <laughs> but, so um, ClickIt is the umbrella company, the, the mother company. Now, um, in 2016, we tried to partner the Cross River State Government to execute uh, one of the biggest trade fairs in the world. Um, that was our initiative, came in-house, right? Um, but we went to Cross River because of Tinapa. So, but it didn't work out. So we pulled back out. Now we're trying to develop our own facility in Abuja. Now, that facility will be called the Arena, Click It Park and Arena. Now, Click It Park and Arena has a bunch of events under it. Now, Kilometer 51 is under Click It Park and Arena. So, it's a so family see, tree right, right, right. issue. So, so now, right. why I explain this is to let you understand that with me, it's just about ideas, 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 ideas. Beautiful. Right. Kilometer 51 is a fusion of two ideas. Now, when we planned the uh, trade fair at Calabar, we're going to, uh, we're going to um, uh, visit, because we started establishing relationships with governments across uh, countries in Africa, even outside Africa. So we thought for Africa, let us do it by way of road. But I had thought sometime when I was probably maybe 16-ish uh, to actually have a, a Pan-African road rally. Right, wow. so now Kilometer 51 is a fusion of what we took out from uh, the trade fair in Calabar and then the road rally. Your so mind is actually a potpourri of ideas. Yes, We've it is. lots and lots it of is. them. And because we can't wait to Even see. now, something just came in my head. Yay! <laughs> Hope you share with us when we go yeah, up there. Yeah, well, yeah. All right, brilliant. <laughs> now let's talk about the countries you plan to visit in mm -hmm. West Africa. You're starting off from Lagos. Mm -hmm. And where and where do you plan to go to? Okay, so for the first of the series, we're doing West Africa and then for obvious reasons. Uh, uh, there, there are no visas. Um, they are our neighbors, so we need to experiment with this, and that is why it's just for the company. You know, we're sending uh, a, a team of 10. I would also be part of the team because I'll be hosting the town hall events. Uh, but we'd leave Lagos and then we'd hit um, Kotonu, Bene, we'd hit uh, uh, Lome, Togo the same day, and then we'd hit Ghana, Accra, Ghana. In Ghana, we'd spend five days, and then we'd hit Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire, we'd hit Yamosukro, um, three days in Abidjan, um, in Cote d'Ivoire, then we'd hit uh, Monrovia, Liberia, two days. Would hit uh, Freetown, Sierra Leone, two days. Would hit Guinea Conakry, two days. I live in my hit life. Banjo, Gambia, two days. And then would hit uh, Dakar, Senegal, three days. And then we'll fly back to Nigeria. Amazing. You're living my Do life. You know, just talking about this, you could see our eyes widening <laughs> and our mouths opening. Because for people like Olive, who are travel junkies, this mm -hmm. is just a dream. Now, when I hear things like this, I love exploring places. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about road travels, all I wanted to do was do a SWOT analysis strengths, mm -hmm. weaknesses, opportunities, <laughs> and threats. And I wanted to start with threats. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, um, 
in, 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 in continents like Europe, America, mm -hmm. it's easy to do things like this mm -hmm. because their safety, security is assured to a certain extent, and also the roads are very good. Mm -hmm. But how do you deal with the problem of Africa where the roads are not so great, security is not that guaranteed, and yet you want to do something so lofty? How do you overcome such problems? Um, I mean, the thing is, uh, the good things are on the other side of, of fear, mm -hmm. right? So uh, for you to... Um, for you to catch the big fish, you have to venture into deep waters. Um, but regardless, this is Africa. We can't take that fact away. There are a lot of challenges, and like you mentioned, uh, security and roads. But I have done uh, uh, Abuja, uh, Dakar, um, through Mali, and it was good. As a matter of fact, the bad roads were in Nigeria. Outside wow. Nigeria, it was, it was a breeze. I haven't done the uh, Gold Coast, and by the way, the, the um, theme for this edition is Gold Coast. Now, it has nothing to do with Ghana, just because we're going through um, the coastline, right, all the way to, um, like, and then Gold just came up from, from somewhere. But anyway, I haven't done that route from up, uh, <coughs> uh, through, the, through the coast, but now I hear that the, there, is a, there actually is an Abidjan-Lagos corridor. Um, you hear that when you talk about trade, economy, and all that stuff, but I would guess that that road is good. You know, a bunch of people do, um, and some of our transport companies do Lagos, Ghana, anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't know what to expect from outside uh, uh, Abidjan, you know, all the way to Dakar, Senegal. That being said, we also heard that it may not be so friendly, you know, to be uh, uh, some of the border Borders, lines yeah. around 10, from 9 p.m., 10 p.m. So, what we have tried to do is to plan our trips, to organize the trips, to set out so some, some of the, some of the, uh, um, um, batches are as long as 12 hours so what we've done is to plan to leave very early so that we can hit you know our destination uh, later 6 p.m okay you know and then in every country we'll be having we we'll, as soon as we arrive a country we'll have strategy strategy uh, sessions um where we would you know talk about what has happened where we are where we are what we're going so in those kind of sessions we are liaising with the uh, our local reps on the ground to find out information about Good. so you have what, local reps right yeah. we have local reps in, well, as much in each as, country in each country Brilliant. yeah so um we try not to we try not to um you know, orchestrate what is going to happen on the on the whole program to make it as real as possible. But then, like you said, this is Africa. Yeah, to orchestrate. To... Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was going to ask, like, how? What are the expectations mm -hmm. from the participants um, beyond the traveling? Mm -hmm. You're going to have town hall meetings, like mm -hmm. you said. What other activities are you planning to do? Okay, so we'd ha uh, we'd actually have a culinary. Uh, we'll have culinary events. And then we'll have art events. The best ways to express and exchange culture is through food and art. Yeah. So, uh, but and for music. The... Well, art. Well, and yes, yeah. art, right. Um, so for the art events, we're actually trying to give back to uh, girl child, the African girl child, uh, and then in terms of education. Look, I, I think the best ways... For... Nigerians are doing a lot of philanthropy. We have a lot of NGOs that are feeding people. But then how, for how long do you want to feed people? I think the best way is for you to invest in the social aspects of their lives, giving them um, um, quality education, and then they will be able to fish, uh, f find food for themselves so we want to give back to we want to give back actually so we would execute our travel artists would execute out uh, with recyclable arts two gigantic artworks and that would be uh, auctioned off in dakar senegal and the proceeds will go to girl child education 100 percent of it um while we would have a culinary event that will, or culinary events and inside the culinary events would actually have a jollof war between nigeria and ghana no I can give you verdict on that one. And, is Gambia going to be um, involved well, in this? Well, we're doing just uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Ghana Nigeria, Senegal. 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 Yes, because we've heard about Senegal. We'll have Senegal requests from Sierra Leone. Uh, yes, right Sierra Leone now. and Gambia have also the have boast of the best jollof. Yes. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah Gambia, yeah, yeah, I feel like Leon. Senegal. I've had Ghanaian jollof, so yeah. because What's I'm on your this, take on the because, no, because I'm on the, because I'm on the team, I was trying to do this, yeah. so I won't I won't give my take you here. You can't give my take. I mean, yeah, Arctic. why not? So, I think <laughs> that Nigerian jollof and Ghana jollof are similar. So, when I ate it, it didn't feel mm. like, okay, this is totally different from what we just felt like we used basmati rice one. Two, it was Nigerian jollof shot of firewood flavor mm -hmm. and a lot of spice. We <laughs> like spicy food. Their food isn't as spicy as ours. So that was Don't what make I the noticed. judge biased. He wants to go in there and eat I'm not, it. I'm not, no, he already I'm has gonna, his own I'm not even going to be a judge. Oh, good. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I don't think any Nigerian, I don't think anyone from that nationality should be a judge. Uh, we we'll, we'll have mix and match, actually. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you also need someone with the Nigerian palate, like Oli said, to enjoy the spices, yeah. to mm -hmm. enjoy the, mm -hmm. you know, to enjoy the right. firewood. Because if not, what if you can do is blindfold the judges. I'm giving you an idea now for free. Blindfold the judges and make sure that they taste the food mm -hmm. and they don't know which one is which and then they give their verdict. So no, it's actually, the thing part, it's is actually that part of the plan. 
This is, but another thing is that if you bring, for instance, a Caucasian to be there, they will give it to the Ghanaian jollof. Because they don't like spice. Because they don't like spice. Say. So you yeah. have to bring that's someone with a balanced yeah, palate. Yeah, it makes sense. It has to be balanced. But uh, trust have me, Sierra Leone has a very, have, they have very good jollof. Who cares about Sierra Leone? At the end of the Nigerian day, Nigeria jollof is well, I'm not going to say anything about Nigeria because Nigeria is actually competing. But <laughs> Sierra Leone has good jollof. Nigerian I've jollof Sierra is Leone and uh, Sierra Leone jollof. I had, I've had Ghanaian jollof. But I won't say anything. Oh, this would be amazing. <laughs> I look Do you know, I wish we, I, I would love for us to speak to you after the 20 days because so, we'd love to hear the reality. You know, all these are plans, all these are things that are on paper, right. but the execution might mm -hmm. be slightly different. Right. So and we'd then, love to hear from and, you afterwards. And, and then that makes sense because we're actually filming every grain of sand and every second on the road. Wow. Um, there'll really be nice. GoPro cameras on the exterior of the vehicles. There'll be GoPro cameras inside the vehicles. How do you plan to charge them? Charge. Like your okay, the go oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all we are taking our own standby generators, we're taking inverters. Like, you are not playing, why not? <laughs> Projected about, 200 hours of video content. How much, um, with regards to such an endeavor, I would imagine that the cost of it would be dynamic, if I could use that word. But how, I mean, how have we been able to fund this and how, how to give us an idea of the cost of planning such a huge this 20 days? Okay, so while I won't call um figures, uh, I would say it is not as expensive as you think. But then, we, because this is about signages, building signages, we've tried to um, get a lot of partners in the region. Okay. And it has not been a breeze, but it has been good so far. You know, so that has helped to compensate on how much we needed to spend or how much we would spend moving forward. Okay. But it's not as ex for, for what we have done or what we're trying to do right now, it's not as expensive. I mean, the only where we have serious costs is because of our, our, our media, and that is because we want to document everything as yeah. much as possible. And then we're looking for opportunities. So this is not even about the fun part. We want to be able to tell people that these are the challenges in the borders. For instance, I'm a very, I do business development, I talk economy, I talk politics, like serious, serious, like when I'm talking about these things. Uh, but you hear about the uh, eco, um, ECOWAS trade liber liberalization scheme, you hear about the uh, common uh, external tariff and all that stuff. A lot of us are not aware of these things. We are ignorant about the facts. But then there are some things that would, there are some things that create opportunities for us outside of our borders, you know, in our neighboring countries that we are not aware of. And instead of having youths try to cross the Mediterranean, getting sold into modern day slavery, getting killed, trying to access new uh, territory outside Africa, we can look you know, into, uh, uh, look at our neighboring countries and look for these opportunities. ECOWAS yeah. is 300 million people. Nigeria is just 100 and, uh, well, from what we know, 180, 200 yeah. million people. So that's an extra hundred. And there's a, there's a thing about expatriates. The moment you are from another place, like you will be accepted, you'll be welcome. Yeah. Trust me, I have a lot of expat, uh, expat friends from, and I'm not even talking about the from the very, you know, the advanced, like, I'm talking about even neighboring uh, Cameroon, uh, uh, Togo, and Benin. Mm -hmm. And then they come here and they're treated like kings and they're treated like gods. You know, so, yeah, these opportunities are things we want to document. And, yeah, so the cost is really on media. All right. right. Mm -hmm. Thank Wonderful. you so much for sharing all Thank this. You for having me. We hope that you look towards spreading this to explore Nigeria as well. And how can people follow up? Those who want to see, I'm sure we'll be putting on the go updates on social media. Yes. What's the hashtag? What's the Instagram page? Uh, it's at kilometer 51. Kilometer is the British spelling, so it's T R E. T -R -E. Okay. Yeah, okay. kilometer 51. 51. Yeah, 51. Yeah, yes. 51 actually. Okay. And then the website is kilometer51.africa. All right. Yeah, because Wonderful. we'll be doing East Africa, South Africa as well. Yeah. And I'm just using this opportunity to tell you all that I'd probably. I would definitely be a part of this, whether they like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm touring Africa with them as well. I'm bringing you the live update. I so think thank you so much for us, thank you. Great one. Thank you so much. I, I think it would be a brilliant honeymoon idea. <laughs> you want to explore Africa. For those who are getting yeah, junkies, like yeah, those, it will get bigger and better. Yeah, yeah. those who I'm want to explore, plan. those who are adventurous, this is the dream. <laughs> to enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.